casting identify is one of the most exciting and also tense moments in any D&D game. You get to learn if that new magical item you just found is an ancient artifact of cursed world and new power, or just a magical toothbrush. And as excited as I would be for a magical toothbrush in the real world, in D&D I think I'd rather a magical sword. So today, we're going over five awesome magical weapons that you can use to bring ruin upon your enemies. Starting off, D&D has a bunch of legendary and artifact level weapons that are obviously powerful, but they're not always the most accessible and I wanted to keep this video real. So for that reason, this video is only going to include weapons of rarity up to the very rare level. Alongside this self-imposed restriction, I also decided that I will only be including one of each weapon type. This way, I provide more depth for the range of players out there that might play different classes, and I don't just talk about five magical short swords. So with that out of the way, let's talk about our first weapon for today, the Fate Cutter Shears. This is a new dagger introduced with the Book of Many Things that has two awesome abilities. The first is called Ever Sharp, which is just a fancy term for dealing an extra d6 of force damage on a hit. A dagger with an extra dice attached to it is obviously heavily sought after by the rogue players out there. And since it's force damage, it is actually very unlikely that enemies would resist the damage, making this dagger super valuable in all levels of play. But that is nothing compared to the second ability, Sever Threads. This ability is so incredibly powerful and honestly bananas busted that I would use this dagger on literally any class. Once per day, when you hit an enemy with this dagger, you can cut the creature's fate. Once you do this, any attack that hits the creature can now critically hit on either a 19 or a 20. And when I say any attack, I mean any attack. This means that you could literally use the dagger once in combat just for this ability and then put it away for a better weapon because this effect automatically takes hold once you hit a creature. No save, no dice roll, just a guaranteed increased chance for all attacks to critically hit. With some very rough statistical math, this means that one out of every 10 attacks will critically hit. If you use this item past 5th level, the average adventuring party would be dealing roughly 8 attacks per round anyways. As a player, this is always worth an attunement slot. Personally, as a DM, I would never give this to a party. So, if you're one of the lucky players to come across the Fate Cutter Shears, I highly suggest you hold on to them for dear life because it is arguably one of the most powerful items in all of 5th edition. Moving on to our second weapon for today, we have another edition with the Book of Many Things, the Fool's Blade. This is a plus two sword that also has a pretty powerful gimmick, or rather, two gimmicks, Fool's Faint and Misdirect. Fool's Faint allows you to use your bonus action to choose a creature and then faint. And no, I don't mean collapsing on the ground unconscious. Effectively, you use your bonus action to fake out a creature and gain advantage on any attacks you make against them until your next turn. Now, this ability can only be used once per long rest, but guaranteed advantage is pretty darn powerful as it is. But the other ability, Misdirect, is arguably just as powerful, if not more powerful than that. When a creature within 60 feet of you makes an attack against you, you can use your reaction to force them to make an intelligent saving throw with a DC of 15. If they fail, the creature must instead attack a creature of your choice within range. This might sound a little bit confusing, so here's a dramatic reenactment of what that would be like. I'm gonna stab you with my completely realistic knife. Wait, don't attack me. Attack him. Why? I don't know. Just do it. Okay. Why? Hey, this is Lee while I'm editing the video, and I just wanted to let you all know that that was not planned whatsoever. <laughs> Let's get back to the video. <laughs> Effectively, you can make an enemy waste an attack against one of its own allies. You can literally just yell, don't hit me, 
hit him instead. And as long as they fail their save, they do. And since this uses intelligent saving throws, there is a very high likelihood that they fail their save, since it is statistically the worst save amongst all creatures in 5th edition. So if you ever want to make a fool of your enemies, keep on the lookout for the fool's blade. Next up, we have a really unique item called the Lash of Immolation. This is a rare whip introduced with Glory of Giants, and it has some really cool additional effects. It is a plus one whip, which means you get a plus one to attacks and damage rolls with it, but you also get a d6 of fire damage on top. So for a whip, that's pretty decent damage, and with its reach, it's pretty valuable as a weapon overall. You can also go harder with it by invoking the whip's rune to deal an additional 2d6 fire damage when you strike with an attack, but that can only happen once per day, meaning it's not super valuable. The really cool effect with the Lash of Immolation comes when you land a critical strike. Whenever you critically hit a creature, they become restrained. Now that might not sound too impressive, but consider what the restraint condition does. It immobilizes a creature, any attack they have has disadvantage, and any attack against them gains advantage, and they have disadvantage on all deck saving throws. Obviously, it's worth mentioning that this effect only occurs when you critically hit a creature, so it's not as powerful as the last two weapons we mentioned. But if you want a whip that is actually effective in combat, then the Lash of Immolation is a damn good option. And now we move away from all of those fancy books and modules back into the basic core rules of D&D 5th edition with the Sword of Wounding. And before you say I lied about the weapon types, I know I included a sword already, but both of them are just modifiers which can be applied to any type of sword, so did I really lie? I don't think so, but if you think I did, make sure to leave a comment and let me know. Anyways, this is a rare sword that has two really cool and really unique effects. Firstly, once per turn when you hit a creature with the sword, you can wound it, and at the start of that creature's turn, they take 1d4 necrotic damage for each wound that it has applied to it. Once the creature takes this damage, it then makes the constitution saving throw with a DC of 15 to potentially end the effect. If they succeed, then the wound closes and the extra damage stops, but if they fail, the wound remains open, dealing damage each round. But the really cool part about this is that the wounds stack on top of each other, meaning that you can deal multiple wounds increasing the damage the creature takes. The more attacks you hit them with, the more wounds they get and the more damage they incur. Now this wound can only be applied once per turn, not round, meaning that you could theoretically attack as your turn and then attack as a reaction to deal two wounds in one round. And if a creature fails their constitution save and throw, then that means you have an entire new round to deal more wounds and more damage. But even if they do succeed on that constitution save and throw, it only heals the wounds that they currently have, meaning that you could continually apply wounds again and again with this weapon, consistently dealing an additional bunch of damage. And that's all well and good, but the crazy part about this weapon is that any hit points lost from this weapon cannot be regained through any means other than a short or long rest. Meaning that this sword effectively reduces a creature's hit point maximum every single time it hits, making it super powerful against strong creatures that have the ability to heal themselves. So if you ever find a sword of wounding, consider keeping it around because it can be very, very powerful even in the later levels of play. And now we round out today's video with a bow of all things called the Glimmering Moon Bow. This is the third item hailing from the Book of Many Things, and now that I think about it, this does kind of show a little bit of power creep in D&D 5e, but whatever, it's cool either way. It's a plus one bow of any type that does not require ammunition and deals an extra d6 radiant damage on a hit. That doesn't exactly sound all that impressive, and to be fair, it is one of the lower damaging weapons on today's list, so why did I include it? Well. It does have a little ability that is pretty cool that you can use as a bonus action. Once per day, you can enter a semi-incorporeal form until the start of your next turn, granting you resistance to all bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. So while it doesn't deal a lot of extra damage, what it does do is prevent a lot of damage, and that's pretty dang good if you ask me. It is worth mentioning that this ability only lasts a round, and as a ranged character using this, you might not necessarily be the target of many attacks, but it can be pretty clutch if you ever find yourself in between a rock and a hard place.
You see what I did there? Either way, the extra radiant damage and additional safety with the damage resistances is another great option for any class that decides to pick this weapon up. And that does it for five awesome and unique weapons for D&D 5th Edition. If you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and check out the playlist in the corner or description below. Also, if you have any really cool items that you think I might have missed, leave a comment below and let me know. I read every comment, almost always reply, and who knows, I might even feature your comment in the next video. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on Friday.